Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Today, I'm going to show you how to create a design mock-up and then put it on a smartphone and a tablet in Photoshop. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning so much fun. In today's video, we're going to show you a really cool technique for basically taking any graphic or image or layout that you have and then superimposing it onto a smartphone or a tablet in Photoshop. It's actually super cool. We're going to be using smart objects. Basically, we create one image and then put it into multiple different places and any changes that we make to that one image, we're going to dynamically update to those other images using linked smart objects. So we've got a little bit of tools and techniques going on with our smart objects. We've got some design stuff and mockups all in today's episode. Let's jump into Photoshop. So we're going to start by opening up our sample images. And while they process, I want to let you know, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can actually download all these images on florin.com. Just follow the link right down below. Now, the first thing I want to do is kind of like get everything together in a way that makes sense. And I've actually just got some snapshots from our current homepage. So I'm going to put all these, I'm going to just use my move tool and then put all these into the same document. So in this case, it's like, okay, cool. Well, let's see what a couple like variations on the home page might look like for iPad or iPhone. All right, fantastic. So this is what we're basically gonna create the design layout. Let's just uh, make this a little bit larger. We're gonna hit C for the crop tool. Okay, let's go ahead and just uh, clear our crop out there uh, and then just make this a little bit taller. There we go. So we'll just click and drag that down a bit. Fantastic. And then we can zoom out and basically just start putting everything. There we go about where we think it's going to go. So you can go right there. You can go. Let's hit F for full screen so I can zoom out. Ooh, I cropped it way too big. That's not a big deal, though. We'll show you how to change your crop again. <laughs> there we go. All right. See for the crop tool. And then you just go over here and click and drag straight up. Boop. All right, fantastic. Look at that. Kind of like the Flurn homepage. It's obviously too large, but it's not a big deal because we can just kind of like move these around uh, very, very easily. Now, we have a little bit of a design mock up here. Always do that first. So let's go ahead and save this out as a PSD. So I'm going to hit Shift Command S. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save this out in our images folder. So we're going to just website example.psd. Works for me. Okay. Now I want to go ahead and get this onto our phone and onto the tablet. First thing we're going to do is go to file and down to place linked. And this is going to link this PSD. So website example, this is literally what we just saved. It's going to link this PSD into my new file. So let's hit place. There we go. It puts it in here. Obviously it doesn't know where to put it. It's not like, you know, not like, oh, use the put in the iPhone function. Okay, does not know that. Unfortunately, we got to do a little bit of work there, but we'll put it right about there for now. Now we're going to place it in this image as well. So again, we'll go to file down to place linked and we just choose the same one. This website example .psd. Let's go ahead and hit place. Okay, this time we'll rotate it around this way. There we go. And let's go ahead and just scale this a little bit. Now you can even do a little bit of a skew because as you can see, it's a little bit wider on the bottom than it is on the top. So if I hold control or command and click on these guys at the top, check this out, I can skew this. Okay, so basically I can just make it look like, hey, this is actually looking like it's, you know, kind of changing with the same perspective as the iPad itself. All right, fantastic. So let's go ahead and start with the iPad. I'm going to hit F for full screen. We've just got a little bit of work. Uh, let's go ahead and start by just making this mock-up invisible. Okay. Now I'm going to make a selection just around this black uh, border of the iPad because honestly, this is the easiest thing to do. So using my magic wand tool, I've just clicked a couple times. And you know what? I'm going to bring my tolerance up to about 30. Okay. So I'm saying, hey, select more of that black outline. Okay. So we've made that into selection. Now let's go ahead and turn our website example on and I'm going to click on my layer mask. Boop. Now it actually did the opposite of what we want. No big deal. Just click on the layer mask and hit control or command I to invert that. Okay. Now that did most of the work there. Okay. Not perfect. I just have to make sure uh, that we use our polygonal lasso, right? Go right down here. Okay. And then here on my layer mask, I'm going to hit shift delete and we're going to fill that with black. 
fantastic. Now, I realize the edge here isn't exactly perfect. If you wanted it to be perfect, uh, you could use your pen tool to do that. Or I'm just gonna go right here into my layer mask itself. And we're gonna go to select and mask. There we go. I'm just gonna feather this a little bit and then bring our contrast up. Okay, it's just gonna make the edge look a little bit better. It's still not perfect, but quite a bit better. Uh, again, if you want it perfect, you can use the pen tool. So next thing I'm gonna, we need to do is hide the little hand or the regular size hand, I guess. <laughs> Why has it gotta be a little hand? Uh, we were gonna hide the regular size hand. Uh, so I'm just making that into a selection. And then here on our layer mask, I'm gonna hit shift delete and fill that with black as well. So there we go. And then uh, we can refine the edge, uh, go to selected mask and then do the same settings here. So a little bit of feathering, a little bit of contrast, a little bit more feathering a little bit more contrast. And now we can shift our edge. There we go. Cool. So that looks pretty decent. Let's go ahead and do the iPhone next. And then I'm gonna show you some around some of the cool features that we're gonna cover. So the iPhone, again, we just make this invisible. W for the magic wand tool, right? We're just selecting the black. Let's make sure to select this area in the glare also. All right, there we go. And then in this case, I'm actually gonna turn off this contiguous icon, okay? And that's gonna allow me to select these icons too because they're black too. So I'm gonna click there and you can see how these icons now get selected as well, right? Let's go ahead and take our sample size to a point sample, okay? And we're gonna click here. So I wanted to select the date and everything, right? We want it to be super accurate. Okay, so now again, we just click on our layer mask. So I've selected the border, we click on our layer mask. It did the opposite again, so we invert it, no big deal, okay? And then, again, we just make sure we go around the edges and say, hey, don't be visible around the edges, right? Okay, on our layer mask, shift delete, and we fill that with black. Ideally, like everything that's not the phone is just filled with black, that way you can, you know, scroll and things like that, but there we go. All right, and we'll just put this right around the bottom. See, I'm just making a big selection and then we'll fill that with black too. So we just don't want it to show up in those places. Okay, and we gotta fill this with black here too. Don't want it to show up over the top of the camera. Cool. Now, that looks pretty decent uh, down here. There we go. Sorry, we just gotta make sure you show up there with black too. Uh, I'm just gonna paint on my layer mask. We're gonna paint black. And by you know painting with black, I'm just hiding it in these locations, by the way. All right. And then I'm gonna hold Alt or Option because look at this, some of this stuff on the screen is actually visible, which we don't want. So let's go ahead and use our lasso tool. There we go. Boop. And then I'm gonna hit Shift Delete and fill this with white. Okay. And then our lasso tool, let's just do a polygonal lasso tool because we don't want that visible there. Let's fill that with black too. And why not? While we're at it, we'll just fill the rest of it with black. Cool. So pretty easy way to cut out a screen, really. I mean, this can be a stock image that you choose, you find online. This can be an image that you photograph. Either way, super, super easy. So now what we wanna be able to do, I can move my image, but look at this. As I move my image, uh, my layer mask is moving too. So we don't want that. Click on this little chain link in between them. And now I can move my, just the image. And there we go. You can see my layer mask doesn't move. Let's go ahead and just rescale this just a little bit. There we go, cool. And I'm gonna hold Control or Command to give it a little bit of, um, there we go, to give it a little bit of uh, perspective warp. So if we click on the layer, check at this, I can move the layer around, or if I click on the mask, I can move the mask around. All right, so that looks pretty decent for now. Uh, we do have a little bit of a shine there that I wanna account for. So a bunch of different ways to do this. I'm just gonna create a new layer we're gonna use our brush tool and I'm gonna paint it like 10%, boom, right there. And then make sure this layer is only visible where this mock-up is visible. So to do that, we just do a clipping mask. So right click and go to create clipping mask, boom. And check this out, this little shine only shows up right there. All right, so you get a little realistic 
little glare look in there. Okay, so this looks good. Let's go ahead and save this out. That's gonna save as a PSD. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this one, which doesn't really need a, a, a glare or anything. So we'll save that as a PSD. But now comes the super, super cool part. Okay, so we've got the same design basically on the iPhone and the iPad. But remember earlier we talked about this is super important using our place linked smart object. So we saved this uh, like web page that we created. We saved that as a PSD. And then when we went to put it in these other ones, I didn't do just do a copy and paste. I went to file and place linked. That is incredibly cool because any updates that I make to the original image, to the original mockup, if I hit save, it's automatically gonna update these to the other images. Okay, let's just show you how to do it because um, I think that's gonna be way easier to understand. So check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my move tool and let's try moving some things around. So let me, I'm gonna hold control or command. Let's just move uh, this up. There we go. Let's move this layer up and this layer down. So you wanna change some things around on your website. Now, all I have to do is hit save, control or command S to save this out. And look at that, it automatically updated on both of those devices. That's really, really cool. Now, let's go ahead and just say, uh, you know what, I don't think we should start off with an image. Let's just go ahead and say, uh, let's get them right into the benefits of what they can learn, you know, boom, right there. Control or command S to save out. And as soon as it saves, look at that, it automatically updated on these. And this one, it doesn't, it doesn't look like I got everything exactly like where it needed to be. Okay, so let's hit Control or Command T. I'm just gonna scale this down a little bit. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And it looks like maybe I didn't make it long enough. Like the web page itself isn't long enough for here. So let's just make, I'm gonna go to a solid color fill background and we'll go all the way to white and we'll put that underneath everything. So let's go ahead and save that out. Boom, and you can see it filled up that document as well. And then you're like, okay, maybe I do want the top thing up there, but maybe, you know, let's move this other, there we go, let's move these features right up there. Okay, so we have all of these, you know, advantages of joining Flurn. <laughs> I just realized this is kind of like an ad for Florin, but you know, I had to use non-copyrighted images. So we're using stuff from our website. All right, so I hit save, control or command S for save and check that out. It automatically updates on our devices as well. So I think this is incredibly helpful for anyone doing design mockups or basically doing like a proof of concept, like, hey, this could look cool as an app or like, you know, you want to build a website for a client and sort of like, hey, this is someone using your app, but you don't have to actually photograph it. You just do this and you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get more free tutorials from us every single week, click on that subscribe button right up there. YouTube thinks you're going to love these videos. And if you want to learn more advanced Photoshop, we're talking about compositing, retouching, super high end stuff. I highly recommend Flurn Pro. You can find more about that right up there. Thanks again. I'll flirty later. Bye everyone.